Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Because in the previous videos, you will usually have seen me working on some aspect of Spring or Spring Boot and showing more of the technical um, features. But in this new series, I wanna build some useful applications. So we are way more use case driven and usually I try to build something that is usable, like a proof of concept, a small scale solution to a problem. And if you like the series, you can submit your own ideas, something that we should build. And for this very first episode, we're gonna build a URL shortener. So you may know these services like Bitly, for example, where you can just chuck in a super large URL and you get back a hash, uh, which you can use as a tiny URL, which you can copy and paste to wherever you need it. And there are many things that you need to take care of when building such a service. But today I really want to start uh, initial proof of concept and see how we would solve something like that using Spring and Spring Boot. So with that said, let's code. So we are in the IDE and let's first take a look what we have here. So what I want to build is an application that of course exposes um, endpoints that we can use. So it should have a RESTful API. So I'm using Spring Web for that. As you can see uh, here, let's start with, with the top. So we're using Spring Boot 273 and I have two starters in here. The first one is um, starter web for exposing the, the endpoints. And I'm also going to use Redis because I really just want to store. So what we're going to do is we use the, the URL, convert it into a hash and then just store the hash and the original URL. And we can really use Redis for that. So I dragged it in as a dependency in here and to, to run it, I'm using Docker. So I also created an initial Docker Compose file that's really just using uh, a Redis image and just starting it up so we can use it in the application. So let's actually start with the endpoint. Um, so what I want to do is, um, so we have the application here. Uh, I call it Shorty, so it needs a nice name, right? So we start with the first controller and I call that just Shorty controller. So let's see. And we make this a REST controller. Um, so, and now let's see, so there, there are going to be two mappings. The first one is a post mapping, so we can just post our URLs that are then converted. And the other one is a get mapping that's just resolving these hashes. So let's start with post mapping. And what we want to do is, we call it shorten. So we're shortening something. And yeah, so let's, let's also define a request and a response. So we're going to use that later. So there's going to be a data class, we call that shorty request. And that will just hold the URL that's posted by the client. And let's also already define um, the response. So it's shorty response, where are we? There. And that will just have the hash. So these are um, the classes or and the objects uh, eventually that we're gonna use. So we just chuck in the shorty request here and we will return, um, yeah, no, we're, we're returning something different here. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's also just quickly define the other endpoint, which is a get mapping and we need to resolve the actual hash. So I make that a parameter here. Um, we call that resolve. Um, so hash is a path variable. Now we just do this and this is gonna return the shorty response. So we leave that as it is right now because I first want to create kind of the, the logic in between. These are the two endpoints, right? We post directly to the to the application root and we resolve using a gap mapping, um, chucking in the, the hash here. So the next thing that I want to do is create a shorty service. And that service is responsible for uh, hashing a URL and then storing it in Redis and also retrieving it um, back from Redis later on. So let's make that a service. And what we definitely gonna need is um, the Redis template. So let's just do Redis, Redis template. Uh, and we're just storing strings and strings. So it's the hash and the URL. So um, we can just do this. And it's uh, since we're using the, um, the Redis starter, it's already pre-configured for us. So let's start with the function to shorten an actual URL. And that's gonna return another string, which is the hash. So we need a hashing implementation, uh, like an alg algorithm to do this actually. So let's use a digest. I'll go with the message digest. I'm using, um, 256 
So, and this is what it's gonna look like. So, this is the shortening and it's actually, I created a, a helper function here for hashing. So it's getting the string. And I also want to specify the length, um, like how long should the, the hash actually be. So I'm going with length, that's an int, and we default to six, which should be enough in most cases. Oh yeah, so um, of course that's a function. Um, yeah, so how, how do we do the actual hashing? So first we get the bytes by using the digest and doing digest, digest, and then we use URL to byte array. So it just gives us the, the bytes already. And now we just convert it to a hexadecimal representation, which you can use in the URLs. So what we're gonna do is hash, and then it's a we're using string format. So it's person 32x, and we just use big integer and chug in the bytes. There we go, that should be it. So that gives us the hash already. And now we just wanna make sure that we use the first six characters of that hash. So we can return hash take, uh, how many? Uh, not six, length, because that's, that's what we have here. So that's all of the hashing that we need to do. So we can use that in the actual shortening function. So let's do hash, hash URL. Now we have it, the hash. Now what are we gonna do next? Um, now we're using the Redis template and we are, we're just using ops, like ops for value. And we set hash URL. So we're using the new hash that we have just generated and use that as the key and the value is the URL. So we can just look it up using the hash later on, right? So we put it into Redis and let's also return the hash here because we need to return it to the client eventually. So. Um, this is actually the, the hashing, but what, we're, what we also need is the resolution, right? Because now when we now provide a hash, we have to look up the URL that's underneath. So what we're gonna do is have resolve uh, with the hash and that should um, give us a string. And yeah, we also use Redis here again, ops for value, get the hash so that may be null if we don't have the hash stored yet so i either want to return that hash if it's not null but if it's null, i want to throw an exception uh, let's quickly define one so we call that um, hash unknown hash uh, just make it a runtime exception um, and i do hash not found should be this and this exception I want to just propagate this to the to the web layer to the controller so ideally we can map this to a HTTP um, status code already so let's use response status um, and we use HTTP status not found so eventually if we eventually once we're gonna resolve the hash if we cannot find it because it's not yet known we would just return HTTP 404 in these scenarios, right? So I can do this like this, throw hash unknown, come on, hash unknown, hash, right? So resolve the hash using Redis, but if it's null, which means that it's not in Redis yet, we just throw that exception and we want to propagate this later on. So this wraps up the service layer, right? Let's quickly recap what we've done here. We have one function to shorten the URL and we're using the SHA-256 message digest to hash the value and then we just convert it to a hexadecimal representation. So that's the hash. Once we have it, we store the hash and the original URL in Redis. Uh, that's the writing operation. And also there's the resolution. So we have the hash, we um, set this to the, or we, we pass it to the service. The service is looking up the hash in Redis. Uh, and returns the URL if it's found. And if not, it would just throw the exception here. All right, so let's go back to the controller and wire everything up. So now we can use our service here, shorty service. And with the service, what we're gonna do, and this is this is the, the um, uh, interesting part here. So we do hash it service shorten URL. So that returns the hash. Um, Oh no, I have to do request URL because now it's wrapped in, in the shorty request. So we now have the hash from the service and we return um, shorty response. Yeah, actually I want the response here. I just see that right now. I messed this up. So let's quickly move this here. 
um, return the response and that only contains the hash. So that should be it. So this is the creation. We just hash it and we return the hash. And, and let's actually, so let's quickly check if that all is working as it, as it should, right? So let's first start with, let me think. Uh, I need a terminal because the first thing that I have to do is run docker compose up because that will now just start Redis. You can see it's, it's running here. It's using a local host port 6379. So this is what, what Spring is using as well. So I can now safely start the application. Let's do that as well. And that should start without any issues, hopefully. It's taking a bit of time apparently. So there we go. Okay, application started. And now what I want to do is uh, in a new terminal, let's see if that works in here. Oh, come on. There we go. So let's actually um, send a post request. I'm using HTTP here. So this is what it should look like. Localhost 8080 and then just URL and we go with HTTPS um, alexguia.com. And that brings up an internal server error because apparently we forgot something. Um, so this is a request and I must annotate this as a request buddy. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, that should be the right thing to do. So let's go back and restart the application. And then we just try again and see if that works. Um, and we are in a terminal, clear it up and I'll send it again. And that has worked. So now uh, you can see um, that we get a hash. So these are the, the six characters that make up the hash. So this part works. And now what we have to do is add the resolution. Okay, so actually resolving a hash is pretty straightforward right now. Um, because what we're gonna do is we just figure out the target URL using service resolve hash. And we have written that, right? Um, and now we will just return a response entity. Uh, and let me write it first and then explain what it does. So we do return response entity. Um, and we just set the status to HTTP status um, move permanently. And then we specify the location and using URI create target. Um, and we can also, this is optional, i get to that in a second, we can just add another header. Headers connection close because we know it's gonna um, go away. So let me do this first. So we have to build the response entity here and this is just a response entity HTTP status. So what are we doing here? Um, we first have to resolve the hash using the service and that gives us a URL, which is the target. And then I'm manually building the response that we're sending. So we sent um, the move permanently HTTP status. So that means the URL you're looking for is move permanently. So um, the, the client knows uh, that, that it has to look up the new location. And then we set the location um, using the URL. We just put that in the location header so the client knows to follow that. And we see what that looks like in a second. And then finally, uh, as I said, this is a little bit optional. We can close the connection because we know that the client is gonna um, move away from, from our domain anyway, and they have to establish a new connection. So, but it, we, we probably can also um, leave that in here. So, and that should work. So what we're gonna do next is we restart the application. So let's go back here, we restart it. Um, and we can actually use the, the hash that I've um, created before because um, Redis is not started or, 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 or emptied in between application runs. So that should still be there. Let's see if it is. So we can still pick the hash that we have just generated uh, during the previous execution. And now let me go to Safari. Uh, you should be able to see that right now. Let me make that bigger. So I go to localhost 8080 slash and I'm just passing in the hash, which is 2C7A9A, and we just hit enter. And we can see it's resolving to my website, which is just exactly um, what we've been looking for. So this is all there is to it. This was a short and sweet um, tutorial. This is the, the, the bare bones implementation that we can go with. There are, of course, many things that we need to take care of, like eventually figuring out how to deal with clashes, um, making it a little bit more robust. Um, but for, for a small scale, 
this should work pretty well. So that was the first tutorial of Let's Build. Um, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Uh, consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.